can everyone see my page with Wave Watch Lyme disease part two? Yes. That's what we're be working yes. on today and I'm going to be sharing information on that. So let me know. Go ahead and unmute yourself if you cannot see the Lyme disease part two uh, PowerPoint page that we're, I'm sharing with you. Thanks for joining me. It's uh, great to be able to share information with everybody and we all need to continuously update each other. So I learn as much from uh, everybody that shares. And I really appreciate people coming on and actually giving information about their experiences or what has worked for them or what has not. So thank you so much for uh, joining today and coming on. And if you'll just kind of mute yourselves until we get situated here and then towards the end of the presentation, we will be uh, opening up the mics for everybody to just talk and uh, connect across the USA. So again, we're talking about Lyme disease and we might have a little bit of a refresher on a few things. Uh, you are on uh, the uh, Facebook group, hopefully, if you can't make a meeting or you'd like to share some information with somebody, most of these meetings have been recorded on uh, Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics, which is a private Facebook group that you do need to join. And then you can also find lots of information on wavewatch.com. And uh, you can just join this as a Zoom call also. So hopefully you're able to uh, meet some way, some way with me. Um, always, I need to go over that disclaimer. The Wave Watch that I have developed is an acoustical fr frequency product. It is a tool to uh, help you work with your health reduce the impact of, of chronic diseases and conditions where self-care has been shown to be important. And obviously I'm not create, I have not created a product that will diagnose, quote unquote, cure. I can't you know, say any of those ideas. We are just trying to balance your body a little bit better so that it can possibly function better. It's not a, excuse me, Wave Watch is not a licensed medical products. And at this stage, all acoustical frequencies are experimental. It's not a medical device. And we do need to remind you that we use medical names because we have to be able to identify ideas in some format. So it's not that you, that we have or that the Wave Watch has identified or diagnosed. It's just that we've used those commonly used names to uh, represent the sound frequencies. I have talked about some of these ideas, but just to kind of give you a little re, uh, preview and review, if you already have a wave watch, you will notice that some of the frequencies are different uh, lengths of time. And so if there's an eight minute frequency, it's really just the frequency by itself for uh, the particular idea. So like if it's asthma, uh, and it's eight minutes, that is just uh, frequencies for asthma. Now within that frequency set, there could be up to 30 frequencies that are vibrating and causing some fluctuation and making that unique sound. Now, if it's 15 minutes, I have added um, inflammation, pain and trauma to that particular frequency set so that you don't have to, do, to know that. So I consider inflammation, pain, and trauma the, the best all-purpose, all-around frequency set that I have developed and put together. And again, it is actually 30 frequencies in one uh, grouping that are for inflammation, pain, and trauma. So if you're listening very carefully, which I don't want you to necessarily, but if you have it up to your ear, sometimes at just the right amount of time, you might see that or you might hear that it changes frequencies in the middle. And the same way with the 30 minute uh, frequency sets or 30 minute plus, uh, the coronavirus ones are an hour and five minutes. That means I put lots of frequency sets together and each of those frequency sets could have 30 different frequencies uh, or pure you know, sounds. Again, that gives it a unique sound just for uh, that particular set. And every uh, eight minutes or so that frequency 
sound will change so that you know it is playing a different frequency. So um, the watch itself is just an acoustical watch. It has frequencies that are sound frequencies. It's not anything else. It's not light frequencies, it's not ultrasound. It's just sound frequencies. And I really crammed a lot of them. Somebody said, well, why, why did you use the eight minute frequencies? And it's so that I could get 850 on the watch itself. And that way you can actually touch a couple of uh, different icons and make it loop through if you are interested in a plane longer than the eight minutes. But some studies have been done that show that eight minutes is a really adequate time and then that your body's ready to move on to another frequency. So that gives you the basic right there. And then you can add to it if you are, are interested in playing that set just a little bit longer. And don't forget, that the whole idea is that I have put a speaker on the back of the watch and that when you select a frequency set that it will start to vibrate and that frequency on the touching your skin will cause one cell to vibrate and then the next cell will vibrate and the next and then basically it zips through your body at 4.3 times the speed of sound and tries to rebalance your system. So there are ideas for 850, I can't even mention them, but just the example here, we have frequencies for virus, emotions, pain, just, just to start. And just the last idea, and this kind of lets people catch up just a little bit as we uh, you know, make it through and start, but you can make your own playlist. But today I am making a playlist for you, which is so important uh, about Lyme disease because most people do not realize the depth of Lyme disease and how much there is to it. So I actually have a second program today on Lyme disease because of the importance I feel about it. So it is very interesting to already have a playlist made up for you. And all you have to do is swipe across the three, three screens and find the one labeled line. It's an icon line. And all you have to do is touch that. And then all the information that I could gather, the frequencies that I could find that might relate to Lyme disease are all in one spot. And that's way better than you having 850 frequencies and you're looking through all of them and, and not realizing that one of the frequencies for Lyme might start with A and another one might start with, you know, T. So these are all put together for you. So I think we need to review just a little bit and I'm trying to see if I can minimize my screen here, just a hair. Okay, so again, let me know if the screen is not visible to you. I'm, I'm, I haven't had anybody let me know so far. So I'm assuming your, my screen's visible still. I punched a couple buttons and uh, sometimes I don't punch them correctly. So I have to laugh at myself. Uh, but the importance today, I just wanted to uh, go over a few ideas that we talked about last week and that we all need to learn about Lyme disease because it is affecting every single one of us in different ways. So Lyme disease can be passed by mosquitoes or other insect bites. It is not just from a tick bite anymore. And you do not just have to have the bullseye rash. That is old, old information. And we all need to be aware that other things can pass Lyme disease. It's found in all body fluids. So that really means to me that it's contagious. Uh, I don't know that I've seen that word written down, <laughs> but there are whole families that have Lyme disease. So somebody might, for, for some reason, we don't know the method, they might have picked up Lyme disease and living in a group, um, it has been passed around to every single one of them. And all of these co-infections piggyback together. So one person could have Lyme disease, another person could have another co-infection, another person in the same family could have a different one, but they've all kind of got it from the same starting point. And somehow in that home environment, it was uh, passed around. 
obviously it's in semen, it's in our colds, and, uh, you know, when we sneeze, it's on our glasses, it's in our bathrooms. Uh, we drink after each other. The list is just endless how it can be passed in a family situation. There have been about 365 diseases that are now connected with Lyme disease. So it touches every part of our life. And I think this is so serious. I've been telling people about it for over 15 years and it really hasn't gotten any better. It's gotten worse. Another idea that I got some feedback on last week, many of you did not know that it could have been quote unquote that uh, engineered disease. And the whole idea from that is that in the 1970s, a group of teenage or teenage or school age children in Lyme, Connecticut uh, developed rheumatoid arthritis. So they sent in the um, people to study and to look at that disease. They sent in the epidemiologists and it took them about seven years to actually decide that it was from Lyme disease which has literally been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. But at this point, it seemed to have gotten out of control. And uh, again, it took them seven years to go ahead and note that it was probably Lyme disease. And then it was named after Lyme, Connecticut, the city that it was found in. And then another name for it is Borrelia burgdorferi. And burgdorferi is the last name of the uh, person who was in charge of that study. But what they forgot to tell us in all of that was that Lyme, Connecticut is just 20 miles from a bio lab. If I can say that name, I probably shouldn't have said that word, but it was very close to that. And it is uh, in control of the department, the Homeland Security actually right now. So that'll tell you a little bit, won't it? And so in my last PowerPoint, I showed you a couple of different uh, sources and books that have been written about that idea. Also, we need to remember that Lyme disease can stay in your system for years, years, and everybody is just a little bit different. So the reason that uh, people and families may not really realize they have Lyme disease is because there are the 365 different diseases connected with it. So somebody might have gallbladder problems and somebody might have thyroid problems and somebody might have joint pain, but those same little bugs that were introduced into that family are attacking each body in a different way. And some people, it could take again, years before anything could be discovered. Now, the last and the saddest thing is that testing is inaccurate. The medical community is looking for your body to make antibiotic, antibodies against it, and we do not do that. Lyme disease and all the co-infections are considered stealth pathogens, and they have this little protein coating around them, and a, that's a very easy way to say it. And so they, when they go into your body, they're cloaked and your body doesn't recognize them as a disease or a problem. And so it doesn't start to fight them whatsoever. So the last thing I found, and I did, I just found it before I started this uh, series this morning, this quote, treatment is not covered by insurance. I do not know that. I know in the Lyme, Connecticut area, it is not. I know that they have, uh, at, about 15 years ago when I really studied it, at that point in time, there were about 50 doctors that had lost their licensing because they were trying to let everyone know about Lyme disease. And so there could be some repercussions on your insurance. So you would want to really look at everything uh, as strategically as you work with uh, different ideas about Lyme disease. Okay, so enough of some of those other ideas. They are on last week if you want to listen to that or send somebody there, but just a quick review. So um, the next slide, this is the complete playlist that's already made for you. And today what I thought we'd do is break those down a little bit. I tell you a little bit more about them and show you a few little pictures. And again, we need to start working on these just as a protection mode. They are estimating that over a million people could be, excuse me, a half a million to a million people could be contracting Lyme's disease every year. And it's not diagnosed very easily. If they do diagnose it, they're going to possibly, the medical community will start with two years of antibiotics. And many people are a little bit leery of that idea. So 
I would like to let you know that the Wave Watch is one of the easiest things that you can do for protection for yourself. Again, it's a preventive protective idea for Lyme's disease. Other ideas for Lyme's disease, and we, we talked about these a little bit, but we'll kind of get this out of the way to start with. Uh, we need to be detoxing our body. We could run through all of the germ folders. There's parasites, bacteria, viruses, and uh, yeast. They are actually thinking now that molds and yeast have, has a little bit to do with Lyme disease, and that is one of the latest updates that they have given us. Um, emotions, uh, we get stressed and Lyme disease can make its way deep. From, it, it's very deep in our system so many times. And then when we get stressed out, it comes to the forefront and causes all kinds of ha havoc. Uh, the lymph nodes need to be worked on. Lyme's disease loves to, you know, it hangs out in the lymph nodes if we're not getting them out of our body. Also, I think the worst place is that uh, Lyme hides in the dental work. So in your teeth, again, huge canals, huge connections there. We've talked about teeth before and every tooth has two to three miles of roots in it. And that's where those bacteria or viruses or whatever can hide. And then when they're stressed in your system, they can make their way out of your teeth, the roots in your teeth and cause a huge problem in your body. Ooh. And this will go on and on. We'll probably keep adding to this, but your organs uh, loves, uh, Lyme loves soft body tissues. So again, one person might have trouble with uh, thyroid. Another person might have trouble with gallbladder. I really think that all of the gallbladder surgeries that we are, you know, uh, there's too many of them, in my opinion. We didn't used to have that many and Lyme loves to attack the gallbladder. So that's another idea, um, you know, your liver or pancreas, the list is just endless. So uh, another good folder on the Wave Watch is to run through the organ systems, a lot of them, and maybe specialize and be very particular about the ones that you're having trouble with. Um, I'm not sure if we got to this slide last time, but I wanted to uh, just make sure that this was in here. There's many natural ideas for Lyme, and I'm really encouraging you to do some homework if you think you have Lyme, if someone you love has been diagnosed with Lyme, if you've recently gotten bit by a tick, and you do see that bullseye rash. But even if you're outside and you get a bunch of mosquito bites, that I would be playing the wave watch and doing some of these different ideas. And hopefully you are including them in your natural selection of things to be doing anyway. So um, these are very, very good ideas, natural okay. ideas for limes. And the list is endless when we start talking about supplements and companies that have developed uh, herbal medicines or products, uh, supplements for Lyme disease. But these are just a few ideas right here. So finally kicking off here, I hope you're still with me here a little bit, but basically um, we are looking at uh, anaplasmosis is one of the first things that we have on the wave watch. And this is just kind of a list of these and I don't wanna to get too boring here, but I do want to have this so that you can see it and then put together why there are 365 uh, different diseases related to these. Because when you get possibly bit by the original tick, uh, it is carrying a lot of different other <coughs> pathogens with it. So this would be one of them. So it's a bacterium related to bacteria. So it causes some of the fevers and the chills, headache, muscles, <laughs> nausea, vomiting, um, can go on and get um, Deeper, uh, late stage illness can cause respiratory problems, bleeding problems, organ failure and death. So it goes from one extreme to the other. So again, most people, if I just put the word anaplasmosis in a list of 850, they might not have any idea that that was related to Lyme's disease. So that's why that playlist I think is so important for us to work with. Another idea is Babesia. So this is a parasite. And I hope everybody's able to read this one. 
I'll give you just a second to kind of look through that. Obviously our older people and people that are compromised their immune system. And I think the sad part about this is that it can be passed in transfusions. And the death rate could be as high as 20%. So sometimes it's never even really diagnosed. Somebody just dies, an older person dies, There's, their liver's enlarged and their spleen, you know, they can't breathe, but they have been infected with a uh, parasite. Causes lots of headaches, fatigue, fevers, night sweat. Lots of joint pain, vivid dreams. I thought that was an unusual one. So again, this is how easy it would be to pass it in family groups or to even be doing a lot of traveling and pick it up just through touch. Let me know if I'm going too fast here, but a really good site is Lime Warrior. And uh, they've got quite a bit, bit of information and they're uh, working with uh, trying to alert people. Bartonella is considered like a cat scratch fever. And um, Bartonella scavenges nutrients from the red blood cells. There's so much to do with our blood cells. So there's a lot of brain and nervous system problems, headaches, rage, anxiety, um, neurological symptoms. I'm sorry, my printing was off here a little bit. I didn't realize that. Uh, neurological symptoms like poor balance, brain fog, memory, restlessness, poor stress tolerance, neurological problems can be innumerable. The list is unbelievably long. So Bartonella can definitely uh, cause problems with your brain and nervous system. So you may see a bump or a rash or a blister, you know, uh, you might have some swollen lymph nodes. Sometimes they can be very often uh, painful and filled with pus. And I do have a picture later on from another one that would kind of be very similar that I can show that I'll be showing you also. But Bartonella is one of the main ones that I have seen people who have gone to doctors that specialize in Lyme disease and they are treated for a long period of time for Bartonella. So uh, it is a huge co-infection causing many, many problems. Mm -hmm. Now here's the Borrelia burgdorferi. And again, it's a different name for Lyme disease. It was just named after uh, burgdorferi who was the uh, scientist in charge of the study. Uh, you can even have cardiac symptoms such as chest pain, shortness of breath, feeling faint, Lyme problems, neck stiffness, tiredness and fatigue. So what is unusual about Lyme disease is that it is a spiral shaped bacteria called a spirochete. And to me, I have always read that spirochetes cannot be killed by antibiotics. They have that special shape. They're kind of like syphilis. They're a cousin to syphilis. That's another one in the group of uh, spirochetes or the spiral shaped bacteria, and they do not react to antibiotics. This particular uh, area that I copied does say that antibiotics may kill the bacteria in some organs, but remnants could remain in the body. So that's a little bit inconclusive, isn't it? So if you go to a medical doctor and their suggestion is two years of antibiotics, you are running against um, what I would consider common sense, because as far as we have been taught, 
antibiotics do not kill viruses. They do not kill spiral keep spiral shaped bacteria. Yeah. They do not kill parasites. And with all of these co-infections, you can't just zoom in on one idea like a bacteria and try to kill it. Then the other pathogens and co-infections can take over and go crazy and make the situation worse. So when you are doing some research and studying, if you know somebody that has Lyme disease, or if you think you have it yourself, in-depth studying is a little bit necessary. Uh, I was able to tell um, several different people that they probably had um, Lyme disease. And uh, when they went to a medical doctor, they were saying, no, it's just... Parkinson's. Okay. Huge problem. Lyme's disease does connect with Parkinson's and all of our neural and nerves and things like that. There is even a study or was a study done that I found about 15 years ago, and I could not find it to be able to quote it to you today, but they have studied there was an example of 14 cases of Parkinson's and all 14 of them had reduced tremors when they were treated for Lyme's disease. So, so many times a doctor may not want to work with Lyme disease is they may want to treat the diagnosed disease, which may not get to the end of the problem because as you can see, uh, or as you would know, a treatment for Parkinson's would be completely different than a treatment for Lyme's mm -hmm. disease. So yeah, I, was, I, I like to say is that we need to look deeper mm -hmm. and that's what the Wave Watch is able to, to, to just, I think, self-educate you just a little bit that um, Lyme's disease could be connected to mm -hmm. Parkinson's. It could be connected to mm -hmm. MS. It could be connected mm -hmm. to um, dementia. Uh, it could be connected to Alzheimer's. The list is endless. I can't even begin to tell you the 365 disease, diseases that it is connected to. So it goes on and on. And again, I'm breaking mm -hmm. down today why mm -hmm. there are so many connections. Mm -hmm. And it's because each of these little pathogens that, carry, that are carried in with the Lyme's disease are uh, causing different symptoms on their own. So another one is a cytomegalovirus. So it's actually called a herpes infection. And it will bother the eyes and the brain and internal organs. It's kind of like mononucleosis. So there's going to be a lot of, of uh, cold and flu, a lot of uh, problems with it. Uh, it's very interesting to uh, see that this disease adds just another layer and some more problems with it. So um, if I guess I need to stop and maybe make sure everybody is muted. I would appreciate that. And we are maybe more than halfway through some of the information I want to give. But if you would mute yourself and I'll see a minute if I can also help mute some people. Let's see if I can do that. Here we go. Linda, there's still some that are not muted. Seems like I'm missing one button here to mute everybody. But anyway, I think that might uh, get us just a little bit quieter. Okay, we'll try it again. So here we go. I'll share my screen. Hopefully everybody will be able to see that. See if I can change view just a little bit. Wow, now it jumped. Let's see, where are we at?
Took me a minute here. Sorry about that. Now, can everybody see me again? I changed screens and went in and out. So hopefully you're seeing my screen again. Let me know, unmute yourself. Vienna, I'm picking on you. If my screen isn't uh, correct, let me know. It's beautiful, uh, I'll do that. Basically, another co-infection with Lyme disease is ehrlichiosis. So uh, this is one that the medical community does uh, work with quite a bit. Uh, it causes lots of diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, uh, in children, lots of red eyes. Uh, you're gonna be getting everything under the sun. You'll be sick all the time. Um, severe symptoms include seizure, coma, difficulty breathing, organ failure. The list is endless. So um, this is another co-infection. I hope you're starting to see the pattern now that we call it Lyme disease. It's been labeled Lyme disease. And I'm even sad that they name it disease because what it is, is you have been invaded by a bunch of different pathogens. And don't forget, there are all kinds of pathogens. So when you think about learning about it and working with it, you want to make sure that your body is, uh, your immune system is protected and you want to be continually doing immune protection ideas, not necessarily just an antibiotic, like some people, uh, you know, have been given that choice. And hopefully they've been able to dig down a little bit deeper and realize that their immune system needs to be very, very much protected. Because if you are, uh, gee, I can't seem to mute myself. I've done it a couple times, <laughs> so I don't know what happened there. So uh, anyway, you want to make sure that you are looking at the whole body, not just one particular bacteria that has been picked out labeled as Lyme disease and isn't even something that the medical community, community is able to diagnose. And again, spiral shaped bacteria are not easy to work with with just antibiotics. That's a big flaw in our uh, care system. We have another one, it's the Epstein-Barr virus. Now at first they didn't have this virus in the conglomeration of pathogens, but it, now it, it's just, again, another virus that everybody seems to be uh, carrying and, and has. So, you know, a lot of times it's called the kissing disease. A lot of teenagers have it evidently, but we can get it. You're gonna have lots of fever, fatigue. Do those symptoms seem familiar? Throat pain and inflammation, some swollen lymph nodes. You might have a uh, rash uh, in large liver or spleen. You might not know that. You know, you may not have gone to the doctor or whoever you're uh, thinking about or working with or praying for uh, concerning Lyme disease may not have gone to the doctor. So they may not know anything about the liver or the spleen, but wouldn't those be great areas to cover with the wave watch? So again, all the organ systems are under attack with anything connected with Lyme's disease and you need to be protecting them in many different ways. So I gave you a list of some natural ideas for support, plus the Lyme disease covers all of those just on your wrist. And then you can add to that, but at least you have something to get you started. And again, uh, the, the basic idea that Lyme disease causes stress and gosh, do we not live in a stress society right now? You know, So just our mental stress today is enough sometimes to allow something to become active. So mycoplasma is another one that's present in 75% of the Lyme cases. So this is an, an overgrowth of different kinds of bacteria. They're, they're very, very small. And I'm so glad the information is on the screen for me to kind of give you, but it says they lack a cell wall. And again, here it is, invulnerable to antibiotics. So if you would start a two-year treatment of antibiotics, 
you are just throwing your whole system out of whack so badly that it really can't catch up very good. And then you have problems with uh, yeast and fungus and candida when you take so many antibiotics. So I don't think I need to stress that. I, 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 maybe I should start over and say, I need to stress that a lot because that is a choice that a lot of people make is to take the two years of antibiotics and it is so hard on your body. So dig deep if you're worrying about Lyme's disease and do want to have some testing done for that. So again, ticks carry this and they pass it to you in a bug bite. And now they're saying that a mosquito could pass it to you. And I just took a trip. I flew on an airplane last week. I just got back from Vegas early this morning at two o'clock in the morning. And what I was playing was Lyme disease because I've mentioned before that somebody could be on that airplane that has Lyme disease, maybe doesn't even know it, just a carrier. And because the air is recirculated, it's going to be passed to everybody on the plane. And of course, um, <laughs> our airlines would be telling us that they have filters and filters and filters. And that idea is just as silly as the, um, maybe I shouldn't say anything too loudly, but we can talk about a link fence, a chain link fence, and, you know, trying to throw a little tiny stone through it. That's what we have. So um, those filters, all of the viruses and bacteria and things are so minute, uh, so much smaller than what a filter can filter out correctly. So again, I think if you get on an airplane, you could have some trouble with Lyme disease when you get off. So play your way, watch for Lyme disease and viruses, all of those kinds of things. So here's a picture of Pastorella. It's a bacteria and it, it look, again looks like the cat scratch type idea. This would be a similar one but it's a little bit different and it causes soft tissue infections and you get a lot of pain and swelling and then you'll have trouble with your lymph nodes. So that's another one that is uh, connected and you might get it from a different source and you know we don't even begin to know the different ways that you can have problems with Lyme disease and the way that they could enter your body. Rickettsia is another one. Now, it is also called Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and Pacific Coast Tick Fever. So this has a lot of paralysis connected with it, seizures, coma. And then it says even more severe conditions include congestive heart failure, organ failure, myocarditis, endocarditis, and it goes on and on. So this one would look a little bit more uh, similar to this. But the problem with people trying to identify and saying, oh, I've got a bite, it's X, Y, Z. Everybody is unique and different and nobody presents with the same symptoms. But this was one image that I could see. So if you are a person that's having a lot of trouble with rashes and things, um, you know, start looking, doing some research, um, hopefully using the wave watch. That's why you're here. Hopefully you're going to use the wave watch with some of these ideas and then dig deeper and go where you need to, to get the correct medical attention. And then make sure that you've studied so that you can uh, really make a good decision on any choices that you pick for uh, taking care of that problem. Tularemia is another one. Um, and I found a couple of pictures of, of this particular one. Um, I thought the tularemia, a large swollen lymph node on the neck with a pus pocket, several different tick bites or tick um, co-infections have symptoms like that. So I thought that was a good one to show you. So some people recognize that. And then large open sores are really common with the tularemia. So at one point in time, this was a little bit more connected with rabbits you know, and at this point in time, I don't even know if they do that, but when we ate a, a few more rabbits, you know, 100 years ago, uh, tularemia was a disease that, that we did pick up from rabbits. But today, in my opinion, all of these have been hyper, um, I'm struggling for the correct word here, 
they have changed drastically, possibly because of a connection with these um, pathogens uh, being looked at and manipulated. Lots of changes in these. And we talk every single time about the 5G. So something sets them off and makes them crazier than ever and grow and change in many different ways than were uh, ever realized or diagnosed or mentioned in any writings for the last hundred years. One of the last ones that we do have on the Wave Watch is the West Nile virus. And so one in five people who develop this are gonna have the headache, the body aches, the joint pains, dominic, uh, vom vomiting, diarrhea, rash. Um, weakness and fatigue can last for months. And then of course you'll see the se severe symptoms. They're similar, you know, muscle weakness, vision loss, paralysis, tremors, convulsions. So this for, is from the CDC site itself. I think that the government has been very, very slow in warning us about these particular set of infections, if you, you want to use that word. It is very problematic. We are having lots of trouble. And that's why I put the Waywatch together with its own icon for Lyme disease. So I think I'm kind of winding down, just wanted to show you some pictures and let you know that if you think you have a problem, you really need to educate yourself. We cannot depend on going um, to professionals whose only plan of action is for, uh, is very limited. And, you know, I feel sorry that they have that limitation. I feel very sorry that their testing is very inaccurate, that uh, it does not look, it, the, the idea of this uh, testing again, is only to look for your bodies when it has made the antibodies. And it does not do that sometimes for years and years and years. So they don't have accurate testing. They're very limited in what they can su suggest for you. And so again, in closing, I just wanted to see if I could give you a little bit more education and, and let you know that we can do something. We can study ourselves. That's one of the neat things about the internet is that there is lots and lots of information. And so you can study, you can make your own decisions. You are in charge of your own self-care. So hopefully you're using your Waywatch for that self-care idea. So I think I've rambled enough. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to open this up. And so if anybody has some additions or things they'd like to add about Lyme disease, I think we're ready to go for that. Okay. So we are rec recording this again live on Facebook. And we have um, this recorded also on Zoom. So if anybody wants to catch it later, it can certainly be uh, up on, on Facebook for you to see. Does anybody have any connections with what they think is Lyme and uh, using the Wave Watch or anything about treatments or any information about insurance? That was one that I had really forgotten about. I just happened to see that and grab a, a little phrase today that insurance may not be paid for Lyme's disease. So anyway, I am ready to let people talk. Hey, Vienna. Hello. Uh, I love the biomeridian scan that you do and bring several family members in each year for our checkups. And several times we've found multiple things in that Lyme folder. And uh, this past year, the, the big exciting addition that you spoke about more with uh, some of the family members at least was uh, that hadn't heard it before was salt. And so I don't know if you mentioned that in a slide already, but that was very fast acting. Like we might expect Lyme to take a long time and its co-infections to address, but in one week, there was a dramatic difference in some follow-up tests when the, there's sea salt or, you know, the different kinds of salt muscle tests to see which is best for you were applied. So I wanted to bring that up. 
perfect. And I think I did mention that last week. And so it needs mentioned again this week that salt was one of the great things. And I uh, really suggest that people get the right kind of salt too, that they muscle test. So they need which they know which salt their body needs because different minerals, different colored salt, different needs for your body. And someone did come in and they were using the wrong kind of salt. We had decided on one kind of salt and they I guess didn't weren't able to pick it up or whatever. And we didn't see any difference in their line. And then when we changed to the salt that they uh, that we thought was better, then their line did uh, seem to improve dramatically and not near as uh, problematic as it was before. So perfect. So again, don't forget it's high doses of salt. It's possibly one to three you know teaspoons of salt every day which actually was normal before we started refrigerating everything. So I said the word high when it really should be have been normal. It would be a normal amount of salt that we need to be taking today. So therefore, if we would be taking that amount of salt, we could be protecting ourselves from Lyme's disease all the time. Linda, back to the salt, how do we administer that? Do we just put it in our hand and lick it or do we put it in water or how do we take that amount of salt yeah. if we're not used to it? Yes, everybody has a different way and, and some different way they can take it. Now I put it in uh, water, like a fourth a cup of water and just kind of gulp down a, you know, a salty water. I've also put it in my hand a couple of times a day. I, I take a teaspoon. And so usually it's a half a teaspoon in the morning and a half before I go to bed at night because it makes me sleep better also. you know. So uh, that works for me. Other people have made maybe a salt soleil where they, uh, you put a lot of salt in the water until it gets to the point where it will not absorb it anymore. And then they can take a teaspoon of that very salty drink too. Some people have chosen to put salt into a pill form. And then I believe you can buy Himalayan at this point in time already in a pill version. So, and then some people make their own pills. So you have to kind of find out what works for you. Good question. And then I think I, you know, since I didn't show that slide again, I could find it and maybe put it back up on the screen. But uh, you also uh, connect that with larger amounts of vitamin C, adding uh, vitamin B, iodine, and silver. Those are all really, really good things to combine together to protect our immune system. And it's kind of sad that we have thrown salt away and our salt on the highway is a better salt than what we eat. <laughs> so, other questions? Just to make it easy for us, would you mind mentioning the other salts? I know you said the one. Oh, okay. Uh, the ones I like the best are Himalayan, which is a pink salt. And the reason it's pink is because it has a little bit of iron in it. The pink and the iron, you know, that you're, you're thinking, oh, that makes sense now, you know. So uh, women who are in the 45 to 55 age range, you know, that are still cycling or, or I should have, you know, the, the 15 to, to 55 age range, uh, women who are having their cycles usually like the Himalayan salt for the iron in it, it seems like. And then uh, I've had probably 5,000 women I've taught to muscle test in my office. And it does seem to me like the women who have stopped cycling are definitely uh, using the uh, Redmond's real salt and it does not have the pink in it, would not have the iron in it near as much. So that's very interesting to me. And then it seems like the men test a little bit more for the Celtic or I'm, I'm sorry, I hope I'm saying that right, Celtic Celtic salt. And that's a gray salt more from England. And I'm not sure what mineral is in there. Maybe somebody could give me a little bit of an idea on that. But it's a different mineral composition that speaks more to men. Uh, and of course, there's some variations. But in general, that would be the ideas on the salt. And then, um, you know, once in a while, you can go to Hawaii and get a, a salt from Hawaii, but a lot of times it's been added to, but I know I've seen a red salt from Hawaii, but you would always 
start with those three basic ones and then muscle test to see what your body likes. And then women usually take a teaspoon and they muscle test for a teaspoon and larger men might need three teaspoons, especially if they're very active and exercising and sweating. So I hope that's a good idea on the enough information or some more ideas on the salt. Yes, thank you so much. I have a question. Oh. Sure. Where do we find the video, uh, the previous episodes of this on Facebook? On, uh, it's a private group and it would, it's called Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Someone else have a comment? I had a question. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, yes, there's so much information coming out about whether there's really such a thing as a virus and um, or whether it's just a theory based on a computer model sequencing. Um, so what would you have to say about that? Um, I did find a frequency for COVID-19. Uh, I'm not for sure what they were measuring, but uh, there are several uh, different uh, groups who measure frequencies and publish them. And so even though the computer modeling, like you said, was a little bit different uh, and we're not sure about the virus, they were able to get a frequency for it. So, uh, and they can do that for anything. I mean, they, we can measure frequencies for rocks, you know? So it, to me, in my opinion, it didn't really matter if, the, if it was accurate, whether it was a virus or a non-virus or, you know, whatever this is out there, they could still capture a frequency for it so that we could try to work with it and negate it. So that when the watch has a frequency for a virus or parasite or the Lyme's disease ideas, it is duplicating the frequency that might be in our body. So if we happen to have Lyme disease or a virus in our body, and we wear the wave watch, it would send the same frequency in, even if it had been mislabeled, even if it's not a virus. I hope you're understanding or that makes sense how I'm saying it. So when we send it into your body, if that thing is in our body that we have the frequency for, they will meet. And then those two frequencies will self amplify so much that they just vibrate themselves into pieces basically and fall apart. And some people might use the word kill or die off or, you know, whatever, but the correct terminology is self amplify. So uh, do they use a computer model to test for frequency? Yes, yes, there's, you know, quite, a, I, I have not seen some of the systems that they use to measure those frequencies. But again, I think the main idea is it doesn't matter if they labeled it incorrectly, we still know that this thing has a vibration. Everything in nature has a vibration. So they're able so, to capture the vibration from it. So if the flu is just a terrain problem, uh, over toxification, it could be just measuring toxic particles in your body? That's a possibility, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and like I said, um, if they, even if they've mislabeled it, we are, we're still able to get frequencies from it. It might be a virus, it might not be, it might be, you know, whatever. Well, and now there's all that talk about what's in yes. the water. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. The envenomation. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, now, uh, I have still not found any frequencies for that, but I, I think that those frequencies will be measured and there'll be some of them popping up that I possibly can use later on. But then also don't forget, and we talk about this every time, the EMFs, I just saw something yesterday and I've seen it for a long time where they have everything 
uh, noted and you know every viral outbreak for the past hundred years they've got it connected to something that we changed in our society that had to do with uh, electricity or radio waves or EMFs and you know so radiate um, that... radiate yeah radiation mm -hmm. yeah and okay. I saw one yesterday that was saying and I'm I'm sorry I can't quote the the you know the show I was watching but you know it was basically saying that the areas in the world that have the most uh, 5g towers have the highest rates of uh, infection yeah yeah that's all been very connected. interesting mm -hmm. yeah it's all very interesting i'm keeping up with all of it right and, and so then on the research there you go I, I know all of you are researchers so i hope i'm you know not giving you some information that's pretty blase but uh, hopefully it's all it's some difference for you and then don't forget that um all of these uh the best i could do i do have a radiation uh detox and i have an emf and uh, electromagnetic frequency detox so those are some things built onto the wave watch the salt is also great for protecting you from emfs i think that's another reason and then um there's more things for for emfs uh, uh but my mind kind of went blank on them i might come up with them here in a minute somebody else might uh, chip into uh what else you do for emfs obviously you're going to turn your you know uh, unplug your wi-fi at night and you don't sleep with your uh, you know cell phone next to you and you don't have a tv in your bedroom if you can keep away from it that kind of stuff you know so it's very very easy to do and i have stones all over my house too because stones will negate uh emfs so the especially quartz stones are very very good they have a frequency that's going to interact with an emf frequency and make itself amplify is our best way to describe it that's the organite uh product Similar organized crystals, I guess. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And then I heard about a new product called, uh, supposedly an off-planet technology called Defend Planet Earth. And it is a um, <clears throat> earthing device that you put in your soil. It's kind of expensive, especially if you're going to use it for large farmland. But wow. it also uh, okay. defends defends against radiation and other things like that. So, you know, in case somebody wants to start researching that. <laughs> yeah, we're all learning. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. And I didn't catch okay, your thank name, you. I guess. Kathleen. Oh, Kathleen. Yeah. Kathleen, thank you. Thank you. Linda, I looked up what yes. was in the Celtic gray salt. Would you like me to read that out? Sure. Okay, let me get to it here. It's from France. Of course, it's got sodium and chloride, calcium, iodine, magnesium, potassium, cadmium, copper, chromium, and zinc. There you go. So a different <laughs> conglomeration of minerals. In different forms. And I just think that God created those salts naturally. They are in perfect balance for whenever people need them. Again, and that's why we traded in salts. That's why uh, countries actually started working back and forth together a lot, was to trade salts. They knew there were different needs. Any other comments or questions about Lyme's disease? I think I mentioned last time that I've had a couple people that have had Herxheimer's reactions. So we do know the Wave Watch works. Is it perfect? I can't say that, you know. It is a prevention tool and kind of gets you started and learning about some ideas and you can work on so many things. Uh, previously in my office, when somebody came in that might have Lyme's disease, uh, just a starting point, uh, you know, could be 10 or 12 different bottles of supplements, you know, and uh, medical could be, you know, two years of um, two years of antibiotics and the cost would be hugely different. So if you get started on the wave watch, there might be some uh, help with financial ideas also because it covers so many ideas.
Well, I hope I didn't wear you out on the second one with Lyme disease. I hope I gave you enough information, but we'll have a different topic next week. So uh, ladies I, and gents, just want to say thank you for everybody coming on today. Any more comments before we kind of click the button and say bye? All right, I'm going to tune out for today. Thank you very, very much. See you next week, hopefully. Bye-bye. Bye, Linda. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for coming on, gals. Thank you, Linda. Bye-bye.